being on Instagram here so that we can go live on both Instagram and um, YouTube. So give me just a second and I'll let everybody come in. Um, the text went out late, so I apologize for that, but um, that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> Normally, I'm on top of it, but um, it always takes me a longer time to get on YouTube. So that's why I always do Instagram second. But um, it seems today like, you know, technology, but that's all right. We are about to get this started, y'all. It is a cool day today. It's overcast it feels so good i'm so glad we don't have temperatures that are in the 80s or the 90s today it was a good day to get out and garden and i cannot believe i have not been out here all day long all day that is just not like me and i was supposed to plant bee balm today but it'll have to wait to um until tomorrow okay so i'm just putting a title on here and we are going to get started because this is good y'all and you know I always um do my lives based on something that has happened or something like that to add herbs so we're going to talk about five reasons to add herbs in your garden if you are not already doing so okay I'll fix the title later because it's just taking way too long. It's taking way too long. And we're going to turn the camera around and we are going to get, we're going to get started here. We are going to get started. So welcome and happy Friday, y'all. Happy, happy Friday. Let me adjust my camera really quick. Um, happy Friday, everybody. It is, I'm so glad it's Friday. It was, um interesting and long today at work it really was um and i was just glad 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 so happy friday um i hope you guys are enjoying your day and getting ready for the weekend um so if again if you always see me looking left and right it's because we're streaming live on both instagram and youtube as well so let's go ahead because i know i'm a few minutes late i'm actually seven minutes late i don't like being late so let's go ahead and get into the housekeeping and then we'll get right into what we're talking about today which is five reasons if you don't have herbs why you should add them to your garden so first thing y'all know if you know somebody who is thinking about gardening who is new to gardening or um, who wants to learn about garden make sure you like and share like and share this information tell them about us we are here teaching you to stop imagining about a garden and to just get out and let's grow one and let's grow one together so if you're new my name is ayana and we just want you to grow like that's all i want you to do i want you to grow and to enjoy the journey and the gardening process um, again, if you want to be notified when we're going live, when we're having specials, um, when we're putting out information, make sure that you text Let's Grow, L-E-T-S-G-R-O-W, to 474747. Text Let's Grow to 474747. And also, if you're new to gardening, if you know someone that's gardening, make sure you tell them to download our free ebook. It's totally free, Five Tips to a Flourishing Garden. Um, this is going to, I've, I've kind of said, it's going to teach you the basic training of when you want to start a garden, when you want to add to a garden, when you want to grow a garden. It's going to teach you those basic steps on what you um, can do. So make sure you download that so that you can just kind of um, get started gardening. So that is on our, um, on Instagram land. That is on our, in our bio, five tips to a flourishing garden. And on my YouTube land, when this um, video is done downloading and rendering, I'll make sure I put everything in the description for you all. One last thing, 
Um, that's why it's important to get on my text message list. I sent out a text message about the butterfly pea flower seeds that are back in stock. We had these a few weeks ago, y'all. They sold out within an hour and 30 minutes. And I had to like go back, revamp, see what all I had. So if you want the butterfly pea seeds, go ahead and order them because I've already received a low stock notification, okay? Um, this time, seriously, when they're gone, they're gone because I had like a reserve. And so I didn't think that they would sell out and they did. So they are back in stock. Um, the butterfly pea seeds, um, we did a video, but they're basically, it's a beautiful blue flower. Now you have to have a trellis for it um, because once they get growing, they grow until the first frost, but they are just really a beautiful flower. I personally use them to dry and put in my teas, but you can just use it just for the beauty of the garden. So um, they are back in stock. Make sure you go ahead and order them. We're going to ship them out this weekend. Um, also, if you like Roselle, um, we grow those as well in the garden for herbs um, and to put in our teas. So we have put those back in stock. We do have a little bit more of the Roselle seeds, um, but the butterfly pea seeds, once they're gone, that's it. That is it, y'all. But I wanted to um, just make sure... I told you to make sure you get on our email and text message list because I'll, I'll email you or text you and let you know. So we did put them back online today and they are um, ready for purchase. And if you have any questions about um, the butterfly PCs, just um, contact me, put it in the comments, put it in the chats, and we will answer them to the best of our ability. But I just I just had such a, I'm so ready to put mine in the ground. They are, they've, they've been sitting on the sidelines just ready for me to plant, but they are just a beautiful flower, especially if you have like a, you don't even have to have this, but in my imagination, you know how, if you have some type of arbor or um, some type of garden uh, decor in your garden where it can trellis, it, it would be so pretty. It's really pretty. We actually had ours on cattle panels and they really, um, they get, they keep growing and they just keep growing and the bees and the butterfly, they love them. So that's on our website. So this is what I wanted to talk to y'all about is five reasons. Okay. Let's talk about five reasons. If you're not growing herbs in your garden, why I think you should grow them in yours. And uh, I'll just give you a little backstory. We got cilantro growing right now and uh, I made black beans yesterday and I love putting cilantro and like red onions on top of my black beans. And all I had to do when I got done with it is literally walk out to the garden and just harvest what I want. Okay, so that's why I love growing herbs. But I'm going to give you five more reasons. I'm going to give y'all five reasons why I think that if you're not doing it, you should. And if you are, comment below. Let me know what you are, um, what herbs that you're growing. So number one, number one, the reason why you should grow herbs is first of all, you can pick them fresh whenever you get ready and you can smell them. <laughs> herbs smell so good. I have some chocolate mint right here that all I do when I walk by is I just come I love smelling herbs. So you can pick them fresh. You can pick how much you want to. And then you can do whatever you need to do uh, with it, whether it's cook with it, whether it's put it in teas, whether it, you bake with it. But reason number one why you should add herbs to your garden is because think about when you go to the grocery store, they have them in a bundle, like they have parsley in a bundle. Um, they have those little uh, packs, and then they have cilantro in a bundle. Well, you might not need that much. You might just need a little bit. And you actually have to buy the whole thing. You know, they're not going to let you pick a couple of sprigs off. You have to buy the whole bundle or the whole package. Or now I see um, at my store that they have the um, they have the the plant, the whole plant. Now the plant, that's good. The, you can buy the whole plant and come back and grow it. But I just think that you should just grow herbs just so you can pick them fresh, pick them when you want to, and you don't have to buy a whole bundle at the grocery store. Um, 
and not use all of it, you know? So that's reason number one on why you should be adding and growing herbs in your garden. Reason number two, it goes back to number one. You can save money. You save money by not having to keep running out to the grocery store. Okay, so say for instance, you need to, uh, you want to bake something tonight and you need some, um, bake. I, I mean, I'm just throwing this out here. Like say for instance, you want to bake some fish or something because I baked fish last night. That's why. But if you want to add some herbs like uh, oregano on there or um, rosemary, you can go and get exactly what you need. You're saving money. You don't have to keep running out to the store. And once again, just depending on how much you're cooking, you don't have to like buy the whole bundle. You're seriously just getting, harvesting what you want to and using it fresh. And then you can come back when you're going to cook with it again and walk right out here. If you have an abundance, y'all know I love to dehydrate herbs as well. Like I will dehydrate some thyme, some oregano, and put them in a um, a spice jar and just like make my own spice rub. And whenever I'm ready to use it, you can use it. So you're saving money that way. You don't have to go to the grocery store and go to the spice aisle and buy separate oregano and buy separate uh, thyme and buy separate rosemary. Like you literally can plant those in a container. You can plant them in your raised garden bed. You can plant them um, however you want to. And just over time, you are going to save money. You can dehydrate some. And guess what? You can even give some away to people because once they start growing, they're just it's so much and it's so much abundance. And so that's why I dry a lot because I like to keep some of my herbs uh, cut so they'll keep coming back nice and bushy and full. And I'll just put them in the dehydrator and dehydrate some and make my own spices. You can make them separate. You can make them together. So that's also a great way on why you need to add herbs to your garden. Number three, y'all. This is the one I really love and the one that's really close to my heart is herbs, whether we realize it or not, when we're cooking, whether we're using it in teas, they offer a bunch of medicinal qualities that we don't think about. And I'll just give you an example like cilantro, because that's what I harvested yesterday. And today, not only do they have like a bunch of minerals in there, but Cilantro is also known, I have to say aid, they aid with like lowering blood sugar. And then you have like basil because we have a full flat, I think 128 basil babies that I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. But some of it is holy basil as well. I plant a lot of holy basil for the teas, but like basil is known to be like an anti-inflammatory. And then is so many medicinal qualities, whether we cook with it or use it in teas, that you um, that is just it's so great to just grow herbs that way. I just I, I don't know. I I started growing marjoram this year. We used to um, they used to use it a lot when we stayed in Italy on certain dishes, and I I, I haven't been used to it. Just certain dishes that I try or certain recipes, it'll cause for marjoram. And you, and that goes back to number one and two. You don't need a lot. Like you might need a fourth of a teaspoon or something like that. And so you can, you don't have to go buy the whole spice bottle. I can just go out there and cut what I want to and use it and just have like one plant. Like if it's a plant that you don't use a lot. So herbs offer so many medicinal qualities um, that we don't even think about, like when we cook with it. That's like one of my favorites. That's number three. <laughs> That's it, it just offers so many medicinal qualities. And we're going to recap back through because I see we have some people joining us. But um, we're talking about if you're not already growing herbs, five reasons why you need to add herbs to your garden. Number four, and I just showed y'all as I was prepping is they're so aromatic like you can just rub on them and just you know put them to your nose like they smell so good they really really smell good y'all comment below what are some of your favorite smelling herbs so comment while I'm going through some of the comments but comment below let me know some of your favorite herbs that you like to smell 
Hello, Yankee sister. How are you? Okay, good. You just got your butterfly piece, uh, flower seeds. Great. We're going to ship. We're starting to ship those off tomorrow. I got everything, um, everything that um, kind of set up because I, I didn't expect last time for it to like sell out like that. And I was just, I mean, I wasn't all over the place, but I was, I was busy. I will tell you that I was busy. So I got myself together this time and they're going to ship out this weekend. Um, good evening. Okay, growing chamomile. Yes, that's another. Chamomile is good for tea too. Growing chamomile, oregano, um, basil, rosemary, ch oh, chives, cilantro, parsley. Oh, wow. That's that's a great combination. Great combination. Kevin says he dried sage. Yes, sage is also good too. Now, I like, y'all know we, we like using it like in our dressing. And I have some here that's going to flower. It's so pretty. I'll pick it up in a minute and show y'all. But, um... Sage is good to dry, especially during Thanksgiving. And then also, like, you can make a, a sage um, rinse, like when you have a sore throat. So that's why I say, like, the medicinal qualities, too, is um, it helps with um, when you have a sore throat and mint. Yes, and it's still potent. Yes, because when you dry, you're pulling that water out, and it becomes very potent. And then that's another thing. I'm glad that you said that, Kevin. Let me tell you another reason why you should grow your own herbs is because in the store, the dry herbs is what I'm talking about. You don't know how long that they have been sitting on the shelves with that one. You can, when you grow your own, you can dry them, you know, when you picked them and you know how long, like they've been in the cabinet, you know, so that's, that's very good. And they do, they're still potent, still fresh. I am a new gardener this year. I love basil and thyme. Yes. Basil is like another one of my favorites to walk by and smell and I didn't get my props together y'all because we are I'm looking at let me just show y'all real quick the basil flat I think it's 128 but we have all different types hold on just a second y'all we got purple basil as well I gotta bottom water it I gotta bottom water it as well and then um, but yeah, this is the basil flats that we have. Um, and we got purple. Can y'all see that? We got purple basil this year. We had purple basil last year, but that looks so pretty in the garden. I'm glad I picked this up because I need to bottom water it. But we have a lot of holy basil that we're starting. And then we always do Genovese basil. There is a basil and I'm so upset because I knew I should put, let me tell y'all, don't use a Sharpie when you label, okay? Use a liquid chalk pen because um, the sun will rub it off. And I'm hoping I can be able to see what is what. But right now, I, I don't know what it is. All I can see is the date. I am not sure. So this is going to be hard because I actually have a basil in here that um, it's, it's a little glow. It's called globe. It's called globe basil, and I always, I don't use it. I think it's called spicy globe basil, but I use it like hedges in the garden. I don't necessarily cook with it, but I just think it's pretty like to line it like a hedge because it forms like a ball, and we are growing that again this year, but one of my favorites is holy basil. That is good for teas, but basil is definitely a good smelling one right here. And I also, while I'm going through the chat, I'm coming, y'all, on Instagram. We just got bugs and stuff flying along. Um, so uh, basil and thyme is so good to grow. My grandson loves to come in the garage and rub the mint. Doesn't the mint smell so good? It smells so good. I love just rubbing my hands. Looking forward to planting herbs. Yes. Welcome, Maureen. Welcome. Yeah, I just love growing herbs. It's so many things you can do to it. Um, the purple basil is very fragrant. It is. You know what? To be honest, the basil, the purple basil that I grew last year, it was it was just really pretty in the garden. Kind of had the same taste as like the Genovese basil, which is like the normal um, basil or more of the common basil. Now, they got all type of basils, but it was just so pretty and just added so much color like that purple. But we still used it and made pesto with it and all of that. Um, all of that stuff, but yes, the purple basil is amazing too, and it smells so good. So I'm going to go back through the comments on Instagram really quick because we are streaming on both. 
uh, our Kentucky footprint says cilantro, basil, and parsley, and she wants to add thyme and rosemary. Those are all beautiful things to grow. I don't have much space and I want to plant. And you still can. Let me show you. Let me just show you this because you don't have to have a lot to, you don't have to have a lot of um, space to plant. Let me show y'all. And we did a video on this last year about like a herb container garden. And I want y'all to see how it has grown. Um, but you don't need a lot of space. That's that's the misconception of it all. You just need to want to grow it. That's what it is. Hold on, y'all. Now, what I will tell you is the rosemary is taken over. But here is the, do y'all see the sage flower? Like this is the, the sage is flowering and the bees love it and the butterflies love it. But this is the sage right here. And look at the container. We're just growing these in a container. And then the rosemary is taken over. <laughs> it's taken over. And then we have thyme that is kind of like, this is a, this was a lemon variegated thyme, but um, it smells so good. It has more of a lemony flavor. But this is what I'm telling y'all. You don't, this is just one pot. And I think this may be a 12 or 14 inch pot. You don't need a, you don't need a lot of space to grow herbs. And you can come out here when you want to and pick whatever you want to. You don't need a lot of space. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to say. You just need to grow. That's what it is. And so we did that. And then I'll show you even still. Let me just show you one more example. I bought lemongrass the other day, y'all. We're going to use that in tea. It was so hard for me to find lemongrass. I started some from seeds. But they are growing so slow. So very slow. So I just, you know, just another reason to buy a plant, okay? <laughs> just another reason to buy a plant. But here is another example. Um, I got to come in here. A lot of times you got to cut it off. But this is another example. Do y'all remember? Um, these are like, what do you call them? You know, um, where you put your spoons and your forks. You put your spoons, your forks, and your, like a cutlery holder. But it's like spoons, forks, knives, okay? And they had these on clearance for $2, like the whole thing. So I just took them and planted some herbs in there. So we got sage again, and we got mint, and we just got sage. I'm going to do a lot of sage drying um, too. But this is just an example, like a $2 container, okay? $2 container, and you can grow three herbs. Choose three herbs to grow. So, yeah, you don't have to have a lot of space to grow herbs at all. Then we got, um, I know I'm supposed to be giving y'all five reasons. I don't know about y'all grocery store, but we have a grocery store, Kroger, here. Never seen this before, but they had these little containers that were this big. And um, they had plants out there for $2. They were smaller than this. This is lavender. It's starting to get new growth. But it's just in like a little small pot. So, and that's what I'm saying. Like when you go to the grocery store, you have to buy that bundle or you have to buy that container. And you don't necessarily need all of that. But you don't get a choice when you go to the produce uh, department or if you go to the spice. You know, you may be trying a new recipe and may never use that herb again. But if you grow it, you can just come and pick two leaves if you need two leaves or you can come and, you know, um, get some rosemary off of there. So it's totally, totally so good to grow. Um, you, you, Y'all just, we have to just grow and we don't need a lot of space. I told y'all when we were staying overseas, there are times where I didn't even have a yard. We just had like a little I don't know, just enough for you to go out there and turn around and sit down with a chair. But I knew that I was going to find me a way to plant a plant, okay? <laughs> I was known to go out in the economy and find a garden center somewhere and grow something. And so we would grow like little tomatoes and basil on the patio. So you don't need a lot of space whatsoever, um, let's see. I bought a little stack planter from Aldi last year and it's perfect for herbs. Exactly. Those stack planters are so, that is a great way to grow like a lot of things too. I haven't seen them at Aldi, but I think I know what you're talking about. And it's a great way to just place some herbs throughout, you know, and it's just, I'm telling you, if it starts getting too much, cut it, it'll get bushier and go just dry it inside. You don't need a dehydrator to dry, um, 
herbs because when my dehydrator is full, I have, I hang them up and I just go ahead and keep, you know, hang them up in a dry space and just let them dry over a few days and you could still do it. Okay. So for all of y'all that are just joining, we're going over. If you're not growing herbs, I'm giving you five reasons why you need to add them in your garden. So let's go back over. Number one is because you can pick them fresh when you want to. You come out and you just get what you want to and you go back um, inside. It saves you money because when you go to the store, you don't have to buy the whole bundle of parsley, the whole bundle of cilantro. You don't have to buy those packs. Um, and then you don't have to buy the spices. So you you use what you need and you let it keep growing. If, it, if you start getting a lot, you dehydrate it and put them in some spice jars and label them with the date because they are fresh and they are potent. Like one of our um, viewers said, uh, we dry herbs all of the time. Um, number three, herbs offer so many medicinal so many medicinal um, uses that we don't even think about. So it's great to incorporate uh, herbs into not only our garden, but into our cooking, into our teas. Before I got on, y'all, I had some holy basil tea and some uh, dandelion root tea, <laughs> some dandelion root tea, but it's great to incorporate that. And number four, we said that they were aromatic. They just smell so good. And y'all gave some good herbs that smell good, that you're growing. I mean, it is amazing. But this is this number five. This is another reason why I love growing herbs. And a lot of people don't think about this, but I'm about to tell you. Number five is because a lot of herbs act as a good pest control. So let's say pest control slash companion planting. So do y'all ever see how people plant tomato and basil together? Or do you see how people plant lavender and roses together? They're planting those together for a reason because they give off a strong scent that confuses the, the pest. It confuses the pest. And so it, I'm not saying that they're just going to go away, but it will kind of deter them and it'll confuse them and maybe not damage your plant. And then a lot of people plant rosemary with peppers and beans. So herbs not only offer like pest control, but they are, it's, it's just a great companion planting as well. Some herbs are known to amplify um, either like how much grows, like amplify the harvest or either amplify the flavor of another plant. So yes, and a lot of herbs uh, repel mosquitoes. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. So, and, and, it, and that's a good point. Uh, minimal, Chris, if you look at some of the natural or organic um, mosquito repellent, because we got one um, that has, uh, it's a mosquito spray, because I'm telling y'all, the mosquitoes down here, they are big and they don't care. They bite through your clothes. It does not, I, it doesn't matter if I have on a sleeve. They'll just, you'll just see them. It's ridiculous. But if we got a natural mosquito spray, and when you look at it, I know it had like geranium oil in there. It had lavender oil, um, but they do, the plants themselves act as a good repellent against mosquitoes because you got to have a plan. You got to have a plan when you work in the garden, in the south, in the summer with the mosquitoes. You got to have a plan because it's a lot of times they bite me on my face, y'all. Okay. They, they, they just bite me on, on my forehead. And I'm like, really? Seriously? And, um, but those are five reasons that you all should just, if you're not doing it, or just if you're doing one, try adding another, just add, add them to your garden. You can grow them again. You can grow them in containers. You can grow them in your raised bed. You can grow them in native soil. You can grow them however you want to, but it's just so good to add herbs to your garden. So I'm going, if y'all have any questions, type them down in the chat. Um, I see some new people on IG as well as YouTube. So I want to just go back over it one more time, but I want to look through the chat while I'm going um, through them. Yes, yes, yes. I'm adding more herbs this year. It's amazing. That's amazing. I love hearing that. Oh my gosh, out on the, I haven't heard that phrase quite a long time, out on the economy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's what we, over <laughs> overseas, you, you be, you're out on the economy. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> on the base and on the economy. Mm -hmm. Hello, Elizabeth. 
um, from, is it Kansas? From Kansas City. Hello, Elizabeth from Kansas City. Um, hello, Juliana. Hello, Sifton Soil 55. Um, but yes, um, let's go back over it. I'm going to look really quick on IG, but I just wanted to share that with y'all because it was just so amazing last night after I got finished cooking my black beans. I just came out here and got some cilantro. I just got what I needed. And then I made some avocado toast this morning. So I just came out again and I just got what I needed. And I didn't have to go because I don't know how much um, cilantro is at your store or how much you get. But I know in the produce department, ours run about $129 for a bundle. And I don't need all of that. You know, like I literally got maybe like four stems. That's all I needed to put on top. But when you go and you have to buy the whole bundle, I mean, unless you're using a lot or unless you're making a lot of salsa or something like that, like I don't need the whole bundle. I don't. I just need a little bit. So that's that's why when you grow your own herbs, you can come out, you can get a little bit, you can get a lot. You can you don't have to have nobody tell you you got to buy that whole thing. You don't have to do that, you know, and that is the great thing about growing herbs. Hello, Bootsy Tootsy from Connecticut. Hello, how's the weather um, there? I looked, I looked at a video this morning, and somebody had got a um, a little snow up in uh, north, north up upstate New York, and I was like, oh gosh. Hello, Pasta La Pizza, and thank you uh, for tuning in, Gloria. Hello from Detroit. Yeah, y'all, let me know how the weather is up there because I was shocked when somebody put a video, and it was upstate New York, and they was like. It's snowing. I was like, oh my gosh, maybe that's why we got cool weather today because it's been 88, 90. Um, I, y'all, let me tell you, I know I'm finna go, I'm not gonna go in down a rabbit hole, but I had to, um, really talk to my husband to yesterday. I said, if you don't get my soaker hose to go, in, I said, Chris, I can't be out here like this again. Water, I said, you see how I have, I had to drag out the water hose. And like water each raised bed. I said, you see what I got to do? I said, I need it and I need it by Sunday. I just had to put a date on it, y'all. I need it and I need it by Sunday or you're going to have to start watering. You're going to have to start helping me water. And I know that's not going to happen. So he's been working on it. He has been working on it. And our problem is it's not really a problem. I'm just trying to tap into our current irrigation and just run um, soaker hoses. It's really easy. I'm a good supervisor. It's really easy to do. You just take the head off and just put that one on and just run it. It's very easy to do. So I see uh, Bootsy Tootsy rain and snow. Oh, wow. Rain and snow, 45 degrees. Oh, wow. Wow. Feathered Sunset had to cover my peas again tonight and then next week for frost. Oh, wow. Wow. Hello from Brazil. That's amazing. Um, so y'all are getting more frost. That's I think that's why we're having um, cool weather. It's because it's it's when y'all up north are telling me about the temperatures. That's why I think tomorrow it's supposed to rain here, but I did see like by next Wednesday it's gonna be back 88, 90 degrees. Um, and I'm gonna be ready. I'm gonna be ready with my watering. I really am. I have a few more things I have to plant. I have been working out in this garden, y'all, just trying to get stuff planted, trying to put down um, flowers. I got some bee balm that I need to plant and just trying to get it right because it seems like, I don't know about y'all, but it seems like the month of April is like really flying by. I'm, I'm not sure where that game came from. And I'm like, oh God. but I did get some tomatoes in the ground. They're doing good. I got some peppers in the ground. They are doing good. Um, it's raining. Oh, wow. Raining in Connecticut too. Upstate New York gets lots of snow. Oh, off the Great Lake. Oh, wow. Okay. I did not look into the perennial spinach, but I will. You know what I did? I went to another garden center and I bought sorrel, sorrel, sorrel. I think that's how you call I don't know what made me pick up even more seed. And that's why when you said perennial spinach, that made me think about it. I'm like, I, I, bought, more, I bought sorrel. And I I don't know, because I love lettuce so much. And our lettuce is starting to bolt. Our bok choy is starting to bolt. But um, during the summer, I like to plant um, callaloo. 
as part of my like lettuce and then I saw like sorrel I saw that that you can plant that in the summer so I said you know what let me pick that up too just yeah let's just keep picking up more seeds and figuring out where you're gonna plant it just like the basil but that's another story y'all that is you know what if that's my only problem picking up seeds and I don't I don't think that it is a problem and Elizabeth said it got down to 35 one night oh gosh I know I would have been in the house up under the electric blanket um it's raining in texas right now i now i am looking forward to the rain because i didn't get a chance to water everything like i did and i've been coming out here every day not in the new garden we have the drip ran there but i'm about to get ready to switch out the patio garden because um we have a lot of stuff is going to seed and so i wanted my husband to run that same drip irrigation and he keeps talking about the water pressure and i'm like look at here let me tell you it's easy it can be done anything can be done and i will tell you how <laughs> just ask me and it could be done you know and i think i could do it myself but it just i'm one of those ones and y'all comment below if you're like that i know i could do it but i'm one of those ones that like to, like if they have instructions, I sit down first and I read all of the instructions and then I get up and I say, number one, okay, do this. And it takes me, it was something that I had my husband put together and I had the instructions. I was going to do it, but I took out and I made sure I had all the pieces and then I counted them and I separated them out. And then I was like, okay, number one, and I was like, this is going to take me like two hours. And I went and got him and it took like 10 minutes, but he doesn't read the instructions. And one was backwards and we had to fix it. But I'm just saying two hours versus like 10 minutes. So yeah, we're going to get it right though. We are going to get it right um, because that's what we're going to do. But yeah, I'm looking forward to some rain and you have growing with Donnie have beautiful weather in Washington. Finally, that is so good. Yes, UT33200, we said peppers and we said tomatoes. Yes, we did plant out some of our peppers and some of our tomatoes and I'm excited, but I got some more to plant out. Um, Let's see. Tatia D, I'm gonna see, I am too. And I need to stop that. I, need, I really need to stop doing, it's just, you, I look at the pictures and I saw sorrel, oh wow. And it was pretty, it was like a red vein uh, lettuce and I was like oh wow that's really pretty really pretty and striking in the garden that was no reason to pick that up I just I made that up just then it was no reason to pick that up um 46 in New York cold and rainy I'm telling y'all that's why it's cool and looking like this today because I was shocked okay so Yankee sister you're like that too I'm telling you I because my thought process is this and this is where a lot of people don't get me <laughs> And I'm talking about my job that I rather take a long, I rather take longer to do it right and do it one time than to have to keep doing it back. So I'll spend extra time as long as it's done right, because I don't like to keep revisiting things. I like to do it, get it done. That's it. Let's move on. So that is one reason why I really sit down and I read the instructions and I go step by step because I don't want to have to come back one month later and something is wrong you know or i don't want to have to come back and right it, and you're right because and growing with donnie i actually sew like so uh with the sewing machine and i will measure like three times and you're right cut once because i don't want to have to try to figure out how to fix stuff so let's just do it like i tell my kids let's just take the time to do it right the first time. I used to always tell them, if you do it right the first time, I won't call you back. If you don't do it right, you're getting called back, i.e. when it's time to clean the kitchen. <laughs> I call, y'all, I'm going to bring my kids. When they come back and visit, I'm going to bring them all one day so that they can just entertain y'all um, because I know uh, my middle daughter just told me the other day um, how I used to get them up at 2 o'clock in the morning when the kitchen wasn't right. And I'm like, well, you should have done it right the first time. You should have done it right before you went to bed. I just happened to get up, maybe get some water at two o'clock and notice it wasn't right. But that didn't go on very long. Um, and they got, you know, they got it right. So, yeah, that's how I like to roll, y'all. I haven't tasted sorrel, though, Donnie. I just I just saw the picture and I saw like the re So it is. OK, you say it's bitter. Is it really bitter? Like bitter that 
like really, really bitter. <laughs> I just saw the picture and I said, oh, that looks really pretty. It's a... Uh, it was like the red vein and, and it was like really nice and it said you can grow it in the summer because um, our lettuce is about to be done with and I'm hoping that it doesn't bolt next week when it starts getting up into like 88. I hope it does not bolt. So um, yeah. Oh, Brazil. Oh, it's hot there. I bet it's beautiful there in Brazil. That's another bucket uh, list place I got to get to. It's raining, Studio 99. Sounds like me and my husband regarding the water. <laughs> okay, I'm yeah, yeah, I don't bad my my husband because I'm telling you, I know, I know how I am. I know how a pain I it take. I tell people it takes a lot to put up with me because um, I don't know. I'm just very um, I just want stuff done a certain way and I want it just done right. So it, yeah, he he's very good with that um, because I actually got some drip ran. Uh, was it last year? No, year before last or something. And he told a guy, "Why you think you why you think you out? Because I know she gonna find something <laughs> wrong." With, and I don't I don't look for stuff to find wrong with it. But yeah, I'm I'm a I am I'm a handful. I am a handful. So I just yeah he he has patience. He has a lot of patience. Yes, he does. He does. Uh, so it's very sorrel is very bitter. Lemony too, so maybe for layering and cook. Okay, so not to eat in a salad. Is that what you're saying? Like it's too bitter to eat in? Okay, I wouldn't eat it. Oh, I see yours. I wouldn't. Okay, I wouldn't eat it fresh. Okay, gotcha. Well, that's good to know. See, I need to be researching stuff before. I'm telling you, y'all, that picture, they look, they did it on that seed package. And it's a company I haven't heard before, but I stood there with my phone and looked it up because it said like non-GMO and non and heirloom. I don't know, but it was pretty it was a really pretty picture they did very good on their marketing um so yes so for all of y'all just join i'm not gonna keep y'all long but i just i see some new people in and i just want to go over one more time what we're talking about because if you don't have an herb i want y'all to go start growing one okay and i'm gonna give you five reasons why you need to do it don't forget don't forget to like and share this information with somebody if you know somebody who's new to gardening if you know somebody who is thinking about starting a garden if you just want to grow make sure you like make sure you share this information that's what we're here for we're here i'm just here to everything i know i just want to share it with y'all just so you feel confident about growing you don't get frustrated um and so just make sure you like and share also, if you want to be notified when we go live, when we have specials, when we put out information, when we have something going on, text the word Let's Grow, L E T S G R O W, to 474747. 47. Text the word Let's Grow to 474747. 47. In addition to liking and sharing this information, um, if you're new, know somebody that's new, download our free ebook, totally free. It is the five tips to a flourishing garden i have crowned this thanks to yankee sister as well as the basic training of gardening so i think that once you download the ebook and you read those fundamentals like those basic training then you will um you'll you'll have a plan on what you want to do how you want to do it where you want to grow and this is what has helped me so much okay so this is what I still go by every day, every time I want to expand, every time we move. These are the things that I do before I even go and buy a plant. OK, so make sure you do that. If you are um, if you have been waiting on the butterfly pea flower seeds, you're looking for a beautiful blue flower that trellises. Um, if you have a garden um garden furniture a pergola um something like that that you want to trellis and plant we have the butterfly pea flower seeds that are just back in stock i will tell y'all i don't have a lot i already got a low stock a low stock uh email so get them now the rozelle is back in stock um we do have i think we we should have enough of those so those should be fine but we also have other seeds that are online so make sure that you go to southernentertaining.com and you go to shop go to seeds and we have basil we have pumpkin arugula uh and i can't think of what else but the butterfly pea flower seeds that's a tongue twister they're back in stock um and then um 
I showed y'all the basil that we're growing. The Seed Starting Masterclass is uh, is on our, um, in the link in our bio on, Inst on YouTube. I'll make sure that I put that link in there too. If you're not sure when to start seeds and you're seeing stuff on social media and you just don't know when you should start your seeds, I highly recommend this masterclass because after this, my intention for this masterclass is so you won't have another question about when you're supposed to put a seed in the ground, a seed in the soil, or start seeds inside, you will be able to look at the back of that package, know your grow zone, know what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to start it, uh, when you can start them again, you will be able to know. And so no matter what people put on there that they have started, you will know where you're at when you're supposed to start yours. Okay, that was it. So now let's recap and then we're going to get off the five reasons five reasons if you are not growing herbs i'm going to give you five reasons why you should the first one you can pick them fresh out your uh, container if you're growing in a container you can pick them fresh in your garden wherever you're growing them you can walk out if you want to walk out at two o'clock in the morning and pick you some cilantro or if you want to walk out at four o'clock in the afternoon or six o'clock in the morning and pick you some herbs that's your business and you can do whatever you want to because you're growing them you don't have to wait till the store opens you don't have to wait till the store closes. you don't have to rush and say they're about to close in 10 minutes you already have those herbs right there that you can pick and you can grow them yourself the next reason why you should grow herbs is you're going to save money so again like last night i love putting cilantro on my black beans I don't need but a few sprigs. Hello, learn to grow. How are you? Happy Friday to you. I don't need but a few sprigs just to garnish them on top and put me a little red onion on there. I don't have to go to the store, buy the whole bundle of cilantro. I literally went and picked me a few stems off. And then I went out this morning when I had my avocado toast and I got me some more and put it on there. I didn't have to buy that whole cilantro bundle so you don't have to buy the whole bundle you don't have to buy like the entire uh like if you need some spices on the spice out you don't have to do that when you're growing it you cut what you want and you use what you want and if you start getting an abundance you can take that and you can dehydrate them hang them up to dry if you don't have a dehydrator you just and then you can store them in a spice jar and use them whenever you feel like like that's a great reason the next one which is mm, kind of my favorite is herbs offer so many medicinal properties i mean they offer so many medicinal benefits like the cilantro not and then they have vitamins and minerals in them as well so while you're cooking you're also being uh being able to get those medicinal qualities so i gave a couple examples like the cilantro they offer a lot of vitamins and minerals but it's also known or it's also known to aid in like lowering blood sugar the basil is is known to be an anti-inflammatory so a lot of the herbs that you have even sage like i told y'all with sage if you have a sore throat you could do like a sage rinse so they offer so many medicinal qualities when you grow your own herbs. Um, number four is my favorite. Also, too, all of my favorite. They're so aromatic. They smell so good. You rub your hand. You smell it. They just smell good. They just smell good in the garden. You need to grow herbs because they just smell good. Um, chocolate mint is another one. I'm just always doing this. Um, but they're very aromatic. And then this is a great one, a great pest control because the pests are going to come okay and you want to know how i know i'll tell y'all something um i was going to put it on my instagram stories the pests are going to come and so when you plant those herbs around um around some of your plants they can like confuse the plant so the reason why you see people like with basil uh growing basil by tomato it's i mean it does look pretty it does taste good but it also is offering like It'll put off a scent that the either confuse the pests or they don't like. Now, remember, y'all, I'm not telling you you're not going to have pests. That's not what I'm saying. Like, go plant a bunch of this and you won't. I'm not saying that, but the, the scent will deter them or um, it'll kind of ward them off. Because right now on my peas, 
my uh, not sweet peas the flower the snow peas I just noticed I have aphids on there <laughs> I just have aphids but um, that's another that's another story but you'll notice that not only herbs they serve as a companion plant but they also serve as a pest control as well a lot of people you'll see do lavender and roses um, yes you have a good weekend too um, when you get done weeding you can come down here to Georgia and help me <laughs> help me out too but um, and you'll see people that will plant uh, rosemary uh, by like the beans and pepper so it it, it offers uh, very good um, companion planting and also pest control so those are five reasons that you should be growing it so if you haven't grown any just pick one just pick one one of your favorites that you would use like all the time like um, during the summer I use lots of basil lots of basil we make pesto um, we use basil and tomatoes I mean it's so good and then sometimes I'll take some a little bit of oregano and put that in there it's, it's just amazing 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 so and then if you have if you are planting herbs try adding um try adding another one and just see how you like it because it is great it, it just offers so many uh benefits let's see um okay so we are going to get off patience is virtue okay yeah you gotta okay i get it last okay grew it did my basic training in uh, fort mcclellan okay i've never been there before fair seed stock okay y'all i gotta get on these comments because i'm they just keep passing by um let's see that is part on open source they are a few heirlooms for everyone uh thank you pasta la pizza yes um thank you so much you start out small yes the sky's the limit yeah you start off with one and i'm telling y'all you're gonna want to start growing it because you like i like this i love doing this i'm i'm gonna add this this year and that's what it's all about <laughs> having a beautiful herb garden yes mint mint has reduced my rodent issue mint is a great one too to grow i am actually going to try Putting, I'm not going to put it in the raised garden bed. Like I'm going to put it in a planter and plant um, mint by my squash this year because for some odd reason, growing squash and zucchini for me is a hit or miss. Um, we have a real bad problem with squash vine borers and sometimes they do so much damage that they take them out and I just pull them. But somebody did tell me to put mint around them. So what I'm going to do is just like take a pot, plant it in there. Um, because mint can take over and I'm going to try that this year because I love sauteed squash and zucchini and uh, the squash vine board they will not let me be great but I'm going to do it I'm going to do it if I got to sit out in a chair um, all night long and watch my plants not really uh, not 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 really y'all I'm not gonna do that um, let's see are there any plants and herbs that should not be planted together uh, there are different plants that um, I have a, I, I don't want to rattle them off on the top of my head, but I do have a book that I go to sometimes when I just want to double check myself um, where companion planting, because there are some plants, I'm not going to say you can't plant them together, but like they may stunt the growth or um, they may cause other pests to come in. Like they'll tell you don't plant, uh, what is it, peas by... Okay, I can't remember, but I do I do have like a, a resource guide that I always go to with some of the things that like if I have just an inkling of doubt, like I will. And there is, there are some plants. Um, so to answer your question, yes, there are some plants that they just recommend you don't plant um, by each other. Now, when I first started gardening, I was just doing what I thought was right <laughs> and journaling and so I'm not going to say you can't, but they just, you know, they just kind of recommend that you don't do that. Um, my parsley have dried for exactly Yankee sister. You see what I mean? Like seriously, when you dehydrate your own and then you put them in the spice jars and come back, they are just fresh. You do. And to me, they just taste so much different. They really taste different. I hate when I run out. Of like a spice let me tell y'all this real quick I know I said I was gonna get out I hate it when I ran out of 
holy basil. That's why I've amped it up this year. If it's an herb that I like, I amp it up and, and grow even more. But I ran out of holy basil. I had dried the holy basil, put it in the spice jars. It's so good in tea. It is great with like drinking when you're about to get ready to go to bed. It just like, you know, calms you down, aids and stress, you know, and I love it. But I always tell y'all now, check with your doctor, okay, before you go drinking herbal tea and stuff like that. Now, just herbs on the food, I think that's fine. But if you're using it as tea, um, like me, um, you got to check, check, do some research and also check with your doctor if like you're on any type of medication. I have to put that disclaimer out there because <clears throat> what I will tell you is if you have high blood pressure, licorice is not a herb that you want to drink or you want to stay away from that because, um, it has like water retention quality. So that's, that's why I say check with your, check with your doctor. Cause licorice is one that I don't, um, drink. Okay. But back to back to the holy basil when i dried it and i used my last bit of holy basil up i think it was like in december and i went to the health food store and i bought the dried version i had to look on the i had to look on the bag i said this is not holy basil and it said holy basil i was like oh my gosh it tastes nothing like holy basil and that's why i'm saying like you don't you don't know how long it's been on the shelf i'm not saying it was old or something but it doesn't taste it does not taste like what i grow in my garden it did not taste like that that holy basil was amazing so that is why i'm dedicating a whole raised bed to holy basil and i'm dedicating i did two roselle hibiscus last year i'm dedicating six of them this year in the ground um because i am out of that as well so the the herbs and things i like to grow i start amping it I amp it, I amp it up y'all. Um, let's see what we have here. But yeah, when you dry your own, it's, it's just amazing. It is my oregano and thyme made it through the winter and it is growing. That is awesome. In some areas they will, they will definitely come back, but I'm so glad that it made it through the winter for you and they're going to come back and it's going to be so good. I love thyme. I, thyme is another one that I walk by and smell. I plant it two time by my tomatoes and then we're going to plant some more tomatoes and i'm going to put some time up here in the patio garden here hopefully i make a, a long list for myself over the weekend y'all like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that and i'll report back to y'all and let you know what i did because sometimes a lot of things don't make it that day but i try i try real hard deal is i love growing deal um deal is I, it's a it's a cool weather one for us uh before it starts going to seed because i actually saved some of the seeds um last year i may be too late to plant deal but it is i used it on a lot of salmon and a lot of and i put it in my cucumbers like pickles i did i direct sow the deal i think i direct sowed it um but deal is another one Deal is another one. Okay, does parsley take a while to germinate? I started mine last week and only a few germinated. I think parsley was like 7 to 14 days. We actually got some that we planted in the fall. Do you have the parsley? Like, did you direct sow it? Did you, um, have you started outside? Are they in sale trays? Um, but I think parsley was one of the ones when I direct sowed it and let it overwinter. It's looking good now in the garden, but... I, if, I have to go back to my journal. I think that's one of the slower ones that did take long to germinate. I really do think so. I taste my first strawberry and it tastes so much better. I am so glad Desi loves GT. And see, that's what I'm saying. It's, I'm, I'm serious, y'all. Once you start tasting what you grow in your garden... And then you go have to like go get it from the produce section or like from the grocery store. It'll make you want to keep growing or to make you want to add something, something else. It'll make you want to add something else. Seriously, like I know I can't. I know I got to make some more space because it is crazy. Um, radishes repel squash vine, vine, vine borer. OK, thank you for that. Because I'm telling you, the squash vine borer, maybe a different variety. You know what? I actually got a zucchini variety this year um, that is supposed to be like you can grow it in containers because I, squash does take up. It, it When you think about like real estate, squash takes up like once it starts growing, 
um, it takes up a lot of space. So I was going to try this new variety. I'm always trying new stuff, y'all. I was going to try a new variety of zucchini this year and see if it grew better in this container versus, um, because I've moved it. I've moved it every year. It's only, we've been here, what, going on 11 years? It's only been about four seasons where it was good. It kicked out and it was amazing. And I just, I do not know. Like we tried some in the new uh, raised garden bed and I was thinking fresh compost, fresh soil, got our soil tested. Everything is good. It was going so beautiful. And then I went out there one day and I mean, I was checking y'all cause I'm like, I'm not going to let them get the best of me this year. And I started seeing my stems go limp and yeah. I had, and when it gets like to that, I just, I pull them. I really pull them. I hope IG don't start messing up because I have been on over an hour. It keeps saying poor connection. Um, you started the seeds inside. How long, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think parsley, it took up to like two weeks because parsley and another one is like kind of slow for me. It was kind of slow. And then when it finally once it finally started growing, it took off because um, I think parsley, and it may be D, it may or may not be deal, but parsley was one of my ones that I started inside. I hardened off, but it took like a little while. I have to go back and I keep these little calendars, and I have to go back to my calendar and look when I started it and like when it actually germinated. But don't don't give up. You got some of them that just take their own time. They're going to make you wait. And you know why they're going to make you wait? Because you keep walking by looking at them. That's me. Like I'm going in there and checking and I'm like, oh, do I see something emerging from the soil? Oh, and they're like, okay, walk in here one more time. <laughs> they like, walk in here uh, one more time. And we're going to tell you what you what what's going to happen. We're going we're gonna to grow slow. Oh, Angela, I'm sorry you didn't get the notification. Are you on our text message? We sent the text message out. Um, and then if you're on our email, we sent it out too. I am so sorry, y'all. You didn't get the notification. Diatomaceous. You know what, growing with Jay? I've tried diatomaceous earth too. They are. And you know what? I'm going to tell y'all this. And don't do this. Okay, when I tell you this, don't do it. I've heard a lot of um, gardeners and farmers. I even talked to farmers in this area and, um, they have the same problem. Now they told me, um, to put some dots. I mean, not diatomaceous earth. They told me to put some seven dust on there. And I was like, Nope. Well, I guess I won't be eating squash. Cause one guy was like, Oh yeah, I just put some seven dust on there. And I was like, Nope, 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 Nope. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not putting seven dust. Um, I'm not putting it on there, but, um, yeah, I, I've tried the diatomaceous herb, but we'll try. I'm, that is something about gardening, y'all. I'm not going to give up. I tell you that. I will not give up trying to grow squash and zucchini, and I'm going to grow it. And um, when I do, the squash vine borers, they can just go somewhere else because um, it's okay. It's, it's going to be okay. I'm, gonna, I'm going to grow it. That's, that's the mindset and the mentality that we have to have. You're trying lemon squash this year. Oh, that sounds good. It's supposed to be vine borer resistant. Okay, let me know. Yes, Yankee sister. Thank you for putting that. Lavender and rosemary. <clears throat> I got some lavender that I started, <laughs> that I started back in fall, okay? I planted, I think, I'll just tell you this. I planted them in cell trays, and it's 12 cell trays. I might have put one or two seeds per cell tray. Okay, so I got four for lavender but when i tell you it is like so slow y'all won't i can't run over there right now you will not believe like it's growing but it's slow even when they germinate it's slow so you know what i do with lavender and rosemary i take cuttings and i make new plants with the cuttings because i'm like and somebody had told me a while ago they said that lavender is is if they germinate it's slow to germinate and then um they kind of they kind of go slow and so i'm like nope i'm i can do it and i did do it i do it but they are very slow rosemary is very slow so this year i did i did rosemary cuttings and it's great it is it is it's great sometimes you got to just make a decision and say you know that was it was great it was great trying it but i'm i'm about to do the cuttings and that's what i do with the the rosemary and the lavender is i just i take the cuttings and um do that 
Oh, you're not on the text message, Angela. You have to get on there. You got to text Let's Grow to 474747. And every time I get ready to go live, um, every time we have anything going on, I will definitely uh, I, I, I send out a text. Daikon Radish. Okay. I will try that as well. But yeah, we're going to get through this growing season, y'all. But I just wanted to just, you know, just let y'all know if you're not growing herbs, I just wanted to give you some reasons on why you should grow them. They're wonderful. And so I hope you do uh, grow some. And it doesn't matter how you start them. You can get the starts. You can get the seeds. You can get, and for all of y'all, now don't be discouraged. Like lavender and rosemary, you can do it. You can do it. But um, if you want to have them this season, I'm just, I'm just going to say, if you want to have them this season, you know, just try it. But do something like what I would do. I would, I'm, I'm, I'll try it, but I'll probably, you know, go get a rosemary plant that's already <laughs> established as well. Like this rosemary right here um, that's been growing, it started off small. I don't know what it, and, and like I said, somebody did tell me about the germination on that. But it's, you still try. It is, uh, the text is, let's grow, L-E-T-S-G-R-O-W, all one word, to 47, 47, 47. So three 47s. 47, 47, 47. Just text the word, let's grow. You'll get on our list. And so every time we go live, every time we have a special, every time we offer something new, because um, we sent out a text and told everybody that the butterfly pea flower seeds are back in stock, limited stock, but they're back. And so we sent that text out. So we'll send stuff like that. And then um, when we get ready to go live, y'all, one more thing, and then I'm going. I am so sorry about Monday because normally we're supposed to go live Mondays at noon and Fridays at six. I forgot that I made an appointment. I didn't forget I made an appointment. I made an appointment to get my taxes done, but I thought I would be home by 12 o'clock and I was not, but I got my taxes done. I got my taxes done. And then when I got home, something happened and I had to go back out and I'm like, oh my gosh, but Normally, on if everything goes right, like I tell people, um, let's grow to 40. Yes, thank you so much, Growing With Donnie. Let's grow to 47, 47, 47. Um, yes, text that. But normally, it's Monday at, Monday at noon and Fridays at um, 6 p.m. And these are all Eastern Standard Time. And I thought that that was okay so it can kind of accommodate, you know, people in different regions. But I also wanted to do it Friday to see what y'all were doing or getting ready to do for the weekend. And then I like to come on Monday to see how was the weekend. So um, that's why I like to do Monday and Friday. I pushed a rosemary list in the ground last year at the end of the summer. It had roots and potted up. Yes, yes, yes. Rosemary is, uh, like I said, once it gets growing, like you can propagate it and, and it does good, but it's just, uh, yeah, starting from seeds. I do have four. I, I, I can't, and I'm proud of that. Like I do have four rosemary, uh, no, lavender plants. It was lavender when I started. Uh, I do have four lavender plants. So that is great. But this weekend we are going to try to get our tomatoes in our patio garden in the back. And we already have marjoram planted. Uh, you said I planted rosemary seeds and it still hasn't germinated. Yeah, they take rosemary and lavender. Um, I can tell you firsthand, lavender does take a long time. Rosemary, I've heard, takes takes a long time. So that's why I just went the cutting. If you know somebody who has some rosemary, that'll let you have some. Try to cut some where it's like a little woody, like where the stem is a little bit woody. And either you can put it in water and just change out the water, you know, every so many days and wait till it roots or like, um, or like Desi loves GT. She took it and just like put it straight in the ground and it started, um, to get roots. So it, it'll, yeah, you can propagate it like that as well. Now you have to be careful. Y'all know how some of the different varieties say you can't do that, but mine just said, rosemary and lavender i don't think it's you know it was just rosemary and lavender i rooted rosemary cut yes that's how i made over the winter like new cuttings with the rosemary is i did the water method i just you know put them in a mason jar um and put the water in there and just changed them out and i say maybe maybe like in a week or two um i started to see the roots and then when i felt like i had enough i just put it in the soil and there you go you got some new rosemary um 
plants. My middle daughter just came a few weeks ago and I sent her home with one of them. I said, you need to have some type of herb. See, that's why I told y'all about herbs. I told her, I said, you need to have some type of herb on your balcony. And then rosemary is really uh, easy to care for, especially for us here. Like if I don't water it, it's okay. Like it's not an herb where you have to coddle it or where you have to pay a lot of attention. Once it gets growing, uh, it's, it's good. It is, it's really a very tough plant, um, to grow. That is where we have our roses. Now I had some rosemary and they got, I, they got probably like five feet, but y'all, I pulled that whole hedge because a guy came to fix our fence and it was six snakes hiding out in the rosemary hedge. And I pulled every last one of them. I said, okay. And one had like wiggled on this patio right here and I'm so glad he was here that day because he wasn't scared of snakes he was trying to catch them and and I was like yeah you you catch them you do you do just that and when he left I pulled it all up but I've still had snakes you know that come in the garden <laughs> I've still had snakes but when it was like six like it was like a family it was a family staying in there you know it was six and not one I can deal with one but it was a whole family and I said okay no that's I don't need that much rosemary now. I'm not, <laughs> I do a little cooking with it. I'll do like a facial steam um, or, or rinse, uh, you know, rinse my hair. But um, you're right, Angela, snakes equals no rope. You are absolutely right. I agree with you, but I don't, I don't know. I might have to take a few. <laughs> I, I just, woo. And my dad, he actually picks them up as well. And he takes them, you know, off, but He's not close enough for me to, you know, call him. When we stayed in the Atlanta area, I would call him. And, hey, it was a snake that got in our house one time. And we called him, and he picked it. And he said, oh, it's just a little garden snake. Get that out my face and do whatever you're going to do with it. You know, <laughs> I'm like, don't don't put that in my face like that. But, yeah, uh, you're right. Snakes equals no rotors. But the snake that we had last year, y'all, it didn't have to do that frog like that. Like, it didn't eat the frog, but that's the... That is the highest I ever, I think the frog jumped as high as tall. He jumped as high as tall as I am, if that makes sense. I've never seen a frog jump that high, which made me look. I'm like, what is going on with this frog? Why is he jumping? What is wrong with him? And I looked over in the corner and I said, oh, okay. So I saved the frog's life, you know, and then I told the frog, let me tell you, you better eat some of these bugs and mosquitoes, okay? That's what you better do because the snake almost had you. That's that's what I told the frog. But, um, yeah, that was the highest I ever seen a frog jump in my life. <laughs> Growing with Donnie saying, nope, I don't do snake. I, I don't either. Oh, my gosh. And this is the first time that when we moved here that I saw a snake ever before in my life. And, yeah, it, um, mm-mm. I can do without the snakes, y'all. I can. And that's why I like to have my garden rows where I can see what I'm doing. I always um, like have my whole, I'm very particular about where I stick my hands. I like to uh, like make sure I can see because yeah, yeah, that <laughs> I told that frog, yeah, I tell you what, <laughs> he did. You get some of these bugs and get some of these mosquitoes and some of these uh, aphids, get those off this plant, you know, but I hope y'all have a, uh, a good weekend. Um, I hope you uh, grow some herbs. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going to tell y'all this and then I'm going seriously. The very, no, that wasn't the very first snake. A snake actually slithered over my foot. That's why I always come outside with boots now when I'm in the garden because I came out with flip flops. This was maybe five or six years ago and I didn't see the snake and a snake slithered over my foot. Y'all immediately I didn't know if I had got bit my heart start um my heart start beating real fast and I came in and I laid on the bed and I didn't want to tell my husband because he didn't told me about going outside with flip-flops like that and so he was like in the garage or something and I'm like lord I hope I did not get bit by this snake but it slithered over my feet and um I was like oh gosh but I'm here, so I, I must didn't get bit. It just terrified me so bad. Like, you never want to feel a snake slither over your feet. You don't. That's you don't want that. You don't want. And you know, <laughs> you know what, um, Angela, my my husband keeps trying to. He does. He 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 keeps telling me I need a dog. 
but I don't have one because nobody, they're not going to help me around here with the dog. They're, they're not going to help. I, the dog is, I'm, yeah. <laughs> All during while we were growing up, the kids used to say, we want a dog, we want a dog. And you know how kids are. Kids would, um, they'll walk the dog, they'll be excited for like six weeks and then all the responsibility ends up ends up being I, i've met too many people where they bought the dogs for the kids and the kids walk the dog for about six weeks and they feed the dog and they play with the dog have the dog in the room and then after that it it, it becomes it becomes on the like the mom or the dad and i just yeah <laughs> but i tell you what when we get our property, when we move to our property and we have our market garden, I am, I am going to get a, I am going to get a dog. I am. And I'll probably spoil the dog too. I, I, just, I, I become attached to like, even with, uh, like my daughter has turtles in her room and I'm like, did you feed the turtles? Did you change the turtles water? Did you do like, I'm constantly doing that. Like I, I become very attached, very, very attached because I'm like, don't, you know, they, do you want to sit in the aquarium? I mean, do you want to sit in the tank like that too? Change, change the water. You know, different things like that. Yeah, favorite one. I will, I'm telling you, I thought when that snake slithered over my feet, I said, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. I cannot deal with this. You know, and, and I, I can just, oh my, I just laid across the bed and my husband was like, I finally told him. And he said, mm-hmm. I bet you won't go out there with no flip flops. So I'm like, oh God. Gloria Allen, thank you so, so much. Thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Everything, y'all, goes back to the channel. Um, but I do appreciate that. So thank you so much. So, so y'all, if you, you if you have not got herbs, let's just let's just make it in our minds to go like grow one or two if you haven't started. If you have, just it's okay. Go ahead and add another one. Just, just add another one. Like I told y'all at the beginning, for y'all who are just joining, I went and got chocolate mint the other day because it just smells good. It smells good, and I'm going to put it in the container. Now, a lot of people use it for baking, but sometimes, like to add a little minty flavor, I'll put it in some of my tea, you know? So just grow it, and then um, I'm telling y'all, once you start growing your, your herbs, you won't have to go to the produce section anymore. You won't have to go and down the spice aisle. So, um, again, if y'all have any questions, you have any topics that you want to talk about, let me know. Um, I'm Yankee sister. I know you're there. I'm still working on the one with hydrangeas because I'm about to get ready to fertilize. Um, I'm about to get ready to fertilize my hydrangeas and I'm going to do a video on it about which ones to prune which ones not to prune i have not forgotten and then it was someone else who wanted me to do a video um so that's coming too they wanted me to do a video on um how we dehydrate our herbs uh when we pick them so um i wanted to make a video about how we come out i like to come out after the uh, in the morning after the, the dew has dried on it and I like to pick them and we have a dehydrator and I put them in there but I also wanted to show other ways to dehydrate herbs as well so we're working on those two videos I have not forgotten but I but thank you Yankee sister because I know I will get out I know when somebody asks me to do something I'm gonna do it and that's gonna force me to put the hydrangeas on my list to go ahead and fertilize because they're starting to look so pretty um, but we do have two different kinds and then I just got a third kind that I'll show y'all as well too. But yeah, it's different ones. You don't have to prune. You prune on old wood, you prune on new wood. So that's some great information, especially if you see a lot of them. Um, that's some information you, you need to know because you don't want to buy them from the garden center and have them blooming so pretty. And then you mess around in the fall or early winter and chop off what was supposed to be the new bud so i am working on that and if y'all have any other topics um that you want to know about let me know let me know i love doing this i love talking to y'all i did not mean to stay on here about 80 minutes i told y'all once i get going and i have somebody to talk to dealing with gardening you can't shut me up 
but I'm going to shut up now. I'm actually um, going to go in here. Let me tell y'all what I'm going to do, and then I'm leaving. I did do a snippet the other day of all the roses that are blooming, and it's it's been an overcast. Things like my flowers and my herbs, I do like to pick in the morning, but the sun hasn't really been out. And then um, what I'm about to do is I'm about to get some of these rose petals. I've already made flower arrangements and put them in the house, but I am about to go get some of these rose petals, y'all, and I am going to run me a bath and put my rose petals in there. And that's what, that is going to be my Friday night treat to myself. So you all stay safe. And again, if you have any questions, just let me know. I love talking to y'all um, so much. This is like the fun part of my week okay monday and friday and then just putting out videos so y'all take care be safe and we will talk again soon y'all bye